hello everybody, welcome back. In this video, we will learn about binary acids and how to rank them in terms of strength of acidity based on bond polarity and bond strength. So you may be wondering, why do some hydrogen containing molecules act as acids or also known as proton donors if we're thinking about the Bronsted acid definition that we learned in the previous video. So why do some of these molecules behave as proton donors while others do not? Well, it all comes down to understanding their structure, property, relationships. If we understand the chemical structure, electronegativity, um, bond polarity, bond strength, then we will be able to understand why some um, hydrogen containing molecules act as acids while others do not. Okay, so in this video, I will focus on binary acids. In the next video, I will discuss oxy acids. So these are the two main categories of acids that we come across in general chemistry. So what I mean by a binary acid, we have a hydrogen bonded to another group or another atom, and I'll just designate that atom as Y. And so factors that affect acidity, before I even mention these factors. Remember to always know your definitions and say them out loud. A Bronsted acid is a what? A proton donor. So the stronger the acid, the more likely it is to donate that proton. So when we start thinking about factors that affect acidity, we're thinking about the ease at which the hydrogen or the proton is donated to a base. Okay. So two factors you must think about. You must think about the polarity of that bond. And remember when we think about polarity, we're always thinking about electronegativity. In addition, we also need to consider the strength of the bond. So let's first discuss bond polarity. Remember that we use a dipole arrow or the partial positive, partial negative designation to indicate bond polarity if we have a polar covalent bond, right? So it's really important that you still feel comfortable using mainly the partial positive and partial negative designations for something that has a polar covalent bond. And now we're kind of zoning in on hydrogen containing molecules, right? So let's look at a few examples. Let's say we have a hydrogen lithium bond. Well, it turns out lithium, because it's a metal, is a lot less electronegative than hydrogen. So you would write partial positive actually on the lithium because hydrogen in this case is more electronegative. Remember, electronegative is the intrinsic ability for an atom to pull electrons in a chemical bond towards itself. And when you draw the dipole arrow, remember you always point it towards the more electronegative atom and dipole arrows have a little positive tail at the end. So in this case here, looking at hydrogen attached to lithium, this is definitely not acidic. Remember that acids are proton donors and what kind of charge does a proton have? A proton has a positive charge, right? If this hydrogen's partial negative, it's not gonna leave as 
a proton, right? So this is definitely not acidic. Let's say you have a hydrogen carbon bond, like a hydrogen attached to a carbon. Will this proton be, um, will this hydrogen be acidic? And the answer is no, this is not acidic. Remember that this is a nonpolar covalent bond. The difference in electronegativities between carbon and hydrogen is not too great, and therefore they share these two electrons pretty evenly. So, generally speaking, we treat any hydrogen that's attached to carbon as not acidic. Okay. If you go on to take some organic chemistry towards the end, you would learn um, there may be some cases where hydrogens can be pulled off with some really strong bases that we're not going to discuss in this um, course here. But for this course, all carbons and hydrogens, not acidic, nonpolar covalent. Now, if we look at hydrochloric acid, now you know that chlorine is very electronegative compared to hydrogen. And we would draw the dipole arrow pointing towards that chlorine. And this molecule here is definitely acidic. Right? because that hydrogen can be donated as a proton with a positive charge. So the take home message here is that the hydrogen must be lost as a positively charged That's something that you must remember there. It has to be lost as a positively charged ion in order to, for this molecule to act as an acid, okay? And the trend that we can deduce for bond polarity, for looking at HY, the more electronegative, if you look at these other atoms, chlorine is the most electronegative of them all. So the more electronegative Y is, the greater the strength of the acid. Because if Y is very electronegative, it's pulling all the electron density towards itself, and therefore hydrogen is essentially got that partial positive charge, and once it breaks away, it turns into a proton H+. And so let's write down that trend together. As we increase the electronegativity of the atom that's directly attached to the hydrogen, then we increase the acid strength. And so as I've said before, understanding bond polarity is going to be critical here in determining if a hydrogen containing molecule will act as an acid or not. Okay. All about those structure property relationships, right? Another factor we need to look into is the bond strength. And this one may be a little bit more intuitive. We're talking about how strong the bond is between the hydrogen and the other atom Y, right? You can imagine if this bond is really strong, they want to stay together. They're holding their hands tight, right? They don't want to let go. But if this bond is weak, then that hydrogen can be donated easily and therefore would make a stronger acid. So it's an inverse relationship here when we look at the trend of bond strength. As we increase the bond strength, we're decreasing the acid strength. It's an inverse relationship here. So when you look at a binary acid, you have to think of both factors. Let's look at a little bit of data here in figures. So in this table, we're looking at binary acids where element Y is halogens, right? Fluorine, chlorine, and bromine. 
you've learned before in the past that hydrobromic acid, hydrochloric acid are strong acids, but hydrofluoric acid is a weak acid. And a lot of times students ask me, why is that? It's hydrogen's connected directly to the most electronegative atom on the periodic table, fluorine, and yet it is a weak acid. And the reason why that is, is the bond strength. Here we're looking at the bond energy in kilojoules per mole. That's the amount of energy required to break that bond. And you can see that an HF bond is just significantly stronger than, for example, a, hydro, a hydrogen chloride bond and a hydrogen bromide bond. And we can see that inverse, relation, inverse relationship. When we look at the bond energy, this is so high, which makes this a weak acid. Once again, if that doesn't make sense to you, talk to yourself, like talk yourself through the definitions. Okay, an acid's a proton donor. Why is HF a weak acid? Well, it doesn't want to donate that proton. Okay, it doesn't want to donate that proton. Why not? Because the bond is so strong. All right, I wanted to show you this figure here. I like it because it shows both the effect of electronegativity. 6A, 7A refers to the position on the periodic table um, for elements Y attached to our protons. Um, in addition, the periodic table, remember the trend of atomic radius. So let's write that down. So the atomic radius increases going down the periodic table if the atomic radius increases going down the periodic table then the bond length increases right and so because you've got bigger atoms you're working with here so they're going to be farther apart so the bond length increases. And as the bond length increases, you can imagine if the bond is super long, it's kind of more floppy, it's easier to break. And so the bond length or the bond strength decreases. And so just to tie that into here, Right? We're decreasing in bond strength as we're going down the periodic table because elements Y are getting larger as we go down the periodic table. But remember, we have to also consider bond polarity. So we always have to think about electronegativity. And fluorine's the most electronegative atom. And so as we go across the periodic table, and in fact, as we go up, the electronegativity increases, right? And so of, of element Y, which would make a more polar bond between hydrogen and element Y, okay? But what we see here, we have to balance both of them out. It turns out hydrogen iodide is kind of in the sweet spot here, where iodine's still pretty electronegative, but because it's such a big atom, um, it has a great bond length, then the bond strength is a lot weaker than HF, and that's what makes hydrogen iodide so acidic, okay? So willing to give up that hydrogen atom as a proton, okay? So let's, let's work a problem together. So when we work with binary acids, remember you have to think about both factors, and don't worry about memorizing bond strengths. I would provide that for your bond energies. Um, if you need that data to make a decision on whether or not, um, you know, one molecule is a stronger acid than the other, right? So the question's asking us to arrange the binary acids in order of increasing acid strength. I should say binary compounds. Not all of them may be acids. And then to explain our choice. And so once again, we need to look up some data here. Uh, bond energy for hydrogen sulfur bond is 363 kilojoules per mole. For hydrogen tellurium, it is 238 kilojoules per mole. And for hydrogen iodine, 
it is 295 kilojoules per mole. What I always find useful when I had to rank compounds um, or anything as a student, I always found my extremes. And I look at this series here and I see the sodium with the hydrogen attached to it. And I know that to be sodium hydride, but I see the sodium with the hydrogen attached and I'm like, well, that's kind of weird. I know sodium is always a plus one cation. Does that mean hydrogen has to be negative one? Yes, in this case it does. So let's write that down. So we know sodium is plus one and it's attached to a hydrogen. And so if this is positive, that means this hydrogen must be negative. And, and these hydrogens do exist. They have two electrons and a negative one, for, negative one formal charge. It's called the hydride anion. And you would learn in organic chemistry, they are great bases, <laughs> great Lewis bases. They act as nucleophiles as opposed to electrophiles. All right, so if we see that this is a negative for this hydrogen here, is sodium hydride ever going to act as an acid? No. Well, based on what I just said, they're great bases. <laughs> so it's never going to act as an acid. And so this will be technically the weakest acid of all, right? Because it's not even an acid. This one's a base, actually. All right. And we also know that hydrogen iodide or hydroiodic acid is one of the stronger acids. Um, it's kind of in the far extreme in terms of the biggest element Y. Um, he, uh, you know, here, iodine being the biggest here. Um, and so we would write that as the other extreme. And it's one of the strong acids. So. If you haven't reviewed over the strong acids, then please do so. So we've identified hydrogen iodide, so this is one of the strong acids. Sodium hydride is a base. And so hydrogen sulfide and the hydrogen um, tilloride um, molecules are somewhere in between. So like I said, when I rank things, I always rank the most extremes and then I work my way to the middle. So, I do understand that we kind of see <laughs> the relative um, acidity strength. We see that um, the tellurium acid will be a stronger acid than the sulfur. We want to be able to explain why that is based on the data. So, despite the fact that sulfur um, is more electronegative than tellurium because it's closer to fluorine, Tellurium is a significantly larger atom than sulfur. And we can look at the bond energies here. An H tellurium bond is only 238 kilojoules per mole of energy to break it, right? And we want to be able to break it to donate a proton, right? Hydrogen sulfur, on the other hand, is 363 kilojoules per mole it's significantly harder to break. That sulfur does not want to let go. And so the way to explain why H um, hydrogen sulfide is a weaker acid weaker acid than the tellurium acid comes down to the bond strength. Hydrogen sulfide has a much stronger bond, right? So sulfur is not as willing to donate the protons, making it a weaker acid than the tellurium acid here. All right, so I suggest that you talk yourself through this material again, try to explain it in your own words as if you were teaching someone else. There's a lot of concepts that we're tying in here that you, you would have learned from first semester general chemistry that we've reviewed over a bit in the earlier parts of this course. But once again, it's kind of coming together um, in its application towards understanding binary acids and their strengths.
Thank you all for watching and I will see you next time.